Okay, cool. Hey everybody, it's Narrative Tarot. I, all I did was wipe the camera, the front facing camera, and like it makes a world of difference. I'm like, cause the other ones I'm like, is it really when you turn it the other way? It's like that blurry, but like, it's better. It's way better now. So I think I just need to wipe it, so. What a great intro, right? So it's Narrative Tarot. Um, this is just a sit down talk about ways in which tarot has changed me practicing things like that. So this is just a sit down video. Uh, check out other videos if you're interested regarding like readings and stuff like that. So here at Narrative Tarot, we don't do zodiac readings, we do monthly readings based on planets so if you have knowledge of your natal chart um that would be great and then if you felt like there are certain planets either transits or natally that were affecting your chart and you wanted to get monthly readings based on that then definitely check those out uh, i do redemption readings and i do uh, just readings as I feel like it, book club things, well, really just book reviews, and uh, zodiac season, so I do do those, and other readings that I'm starting to like put in there, but yeah, there's a lot more. Uh, this channel is like fairly new, it's only about a year old or so, and um, yeah, so I'm happy to kind of like be doing this consistently, things like that. So commenting, liking, subscribing helps, you know, boost engagement, get the views up, get the likes up, subscribers, it just grows the community, things like that. So all of that's out the way. So now I can talk. <laughs> so. Um, so this video is just like pretty quick. It's going to be the ways in which tarot has changed me and where I see myself going forward. I think I've kind of done a few videos where I've not hinted at this and there's really not much to hint at. There's no big grand reveal. But what I will say is that I'm really happy that I've had the experiences that I've had regarding uh, spiritual awakenings and just spiritual growth in general because I feel like the person I was five years ago isn't who I am today. There's some core elements that are there, but I think that a lot of the shadow stuff is integrated a lot better now than then. And I guess I'm reflecting on this because I'm entering a new five year cycle. So it really, um, it really puts things into perspective. I'm starting my like, late 20s now and so I started it started this process in my early 20s so 22 23 and now I'm in my basically late 20s so it's been a really interesting progression it's been an interesting ride journey with regards to emotions and dealing with things and evaluating myself and stuff like that so I'm really grateful for the progress that I have made I have a lot of progress to do you know make um, but I'm just kind of grateful so ways that tarot has changed me um, it definitely has forced me to look at some difficult aspects or things that I don't want to look at particularly when you get like repeating cards so one of the cards that wasn't repeating but that I was terrified of getting and then that always seemed to like bring it to the forefront was the seven of swords in the psychic tarot and there was just something about it that I really like was scared of and I don't think I've like deep dived into that but it kind of um I feel like getting it means that what you thought was wrong, what you thought needs critical examination, it's not exactly what you're seeing. And I think as a Leo moon, like not being right is like hard. <laughs> it's like hard to deal with. I'm like, oh my God, I'm not right like 100% of the time. Like, what are you talking about? But um, that was a card that really triggered me. And then there were other like instances with tarot, like 
I don't really use it anymore, but the Angel Answers, I think it's called. I have it somewhere over there, but I'm not going to get it. But it's the Doreen Virtue. And that deck, I really don't get along with that deck, but I don't want to get it, give it away either. Because I'm like, now it's kind of a collectible, I guess. Um, but I just remember learning that I had to ask a question and be okay with whatever the answer was even if it wasn't something that I personally liked because that deck even though I feel like it's kind of like bitchy is kind of also very firm like when you get a card that's the answer and I think with tarot and how people approach tarot is that they keep asking the same fucking question over and over it's like not to be rude and I know that repeat clients and stuff like that definitely want updates and progressions but I feel that for me one of the biggest things I've had to overcome is like stagnation in my life and that is in part particularly why I don't read for myself a lot because I, <clears throat> I find that the same questions I ask over and over and over again and when you're asking over and over and over again you're not listening to the answer or you're not asking the right question um, you're not taking advice, things like that. So it's really interesting how that has turned out. Like it's something that I'm still working through. It hasn't resolved itself, but it's something that I noted that like when you keep asking the same question, um, definitely it, it stagnates things for one. And then two, you kind of end up going in circles and confusing yourself because you can get an answer and then if you get like a slightly different one you're kind of like well is this the right answer is this, you know is a the right an a the right answer or choice or is b the right answer or choice and then you do it again and it's like there's a c you do it again there's a d and then you do it again and now you're like your a to z with all of these possibilities and answers and choices and you've kind of confused yourself and then you're like you just wanted one answer but it's like the one answer you got you weren't interested in hearing and you weren't interested in seeing that path through you wanted to get around that and so tarot has helped me to see that you can't really get around the necessary like emotional mental physical spiritual whatever work um if you want a particular answer um, or if you want an answer, whatever answer that you're given, you have to like deal with that because if you didn't ask tarot and you were just given the cards through life and you had to make those choices, whatever choice you made automatically eliminates like other paths and you wouldn't be able to get on to other ways or change your fate or whatever so easily. Like with cards you can kind of see them as like innocuous and kind of you can ask the same question over and over again but you wouldn't dare be able to do that in like real life like whatever path you're on is the path that you're on and it takes other people generally circumstances outside of your control to get you to another existence or plane or path or whatever it's you're in control with the questions that you ask with tarot and um you know the answers you get may not be in your control but you can definitely stop it there and take what it's you know given you and then move forward because in real life you know life outside of tarot it's not as easy to switch your path um particularly for people that have a lot of obligations you really have to like plan that <clears throat> plan that kind of stuff and really sit down and think about consequences you know so it's just kind of easy to say you don't like a certain thing and um with tarot but it's kind of another thing in your actual lived experience sometimes and I think uh for people who are quite like fastidious I guess and hard to please that and kind of reckless and I've been that um, like translating that to your like lived experience kind of causes a lot of issues and it's kind of like the same issue of not listening of not 
taking care of the answer, not waiting to have, you know, having patience to receive the answer. Um, it kind of works against you and it's definitely worked against me. So I'm going to take that knowledge of self moving forward. So that's another thing. And then I guess one of the last things is that, um, or the few things, one, I'm still not devoted to any one practitioner path. And I find that with this tarot channel, it kind of makes it hard to, I don't want to say market, but I think put forth because I'm not really a zodiac. I'm not really, like it's very eclectic. So it's like, I'm not just someone who wants to use the tarot for self. I want to use it for others and it's just like, I've kind of gone through trying to figure out what exactly I had to offer with this and exploring tarot, different systems, different decks. Um, watching other people definitely has helped me hone in more on what I really want to do. And so it's been a process because the decks that I bought um, a lot of them were in particular systems of thought and I felt like I had to do it a certain way and have an altar a certain way and I had to buy a bunch of stuff and as I've gone along there's been this big um, just letting go I guess like I did the life-changing magic of tidying up with Marie Kondo and that helped for like my other material possessions but I think for some reason tarot because I knew that it was going to be an integral part of my life going forward um, even if I never professionally read but now I'm like going to do that in the future uh, knowing that I, that was the one space that I had kind of a bit of a flux or a bit of space to grow it kind of wasn't as easy to minimize it or streamline it and it's still something I'm trying to streamline so uh, I definitely have gotten a lot more uh, how do we say a lot more in tune with the things that I do and don't like so I'm not really into, for example, Doreen Virtue decks. I'm not really into uh, Lenormand. I mean, I would like to try it out, but I've kind of, looking at it, I'm not really so sure. I realized I'm just a lot more open and um, not so boxed in, and I don't want to be boxed in. I want to be a lot more open, able to go in and out, and that probably will cause some issues with people, but it's going through this has allowed me to see that you don't have to pick a particular path as far as Wiccan or Pagan or African spiritualities or Asian or, you know, Indigenous Americas. You don't have to pick one you can kind of I don't want to say dabble in them but you can learn about whichever ones you want to learn about or whichever ones you feel called to and that healing can come through whichever one you're in at the moment and to open yourself up and not be so attached to almost am I doing it right uh, in a sense so that's cool another thing is because I'm not really affiliated with any tradition, I'm not buying any particular tools. So it's just the decks. I'm just really more into the decks. And that's helpful because I'm not clouding myself anymore. Like I still have an altar and stuff like that. And I might get some more things to spruce it up a little bit, but it's more about the decks with me now than I think putting on the visual aesthetic air of being a witch or a practitioner or a tarot reader or whatever it is and so an advice to everybody else is maybe start with a deck a simple altar and go from there I think that YouTube and Instagram are places particularly for 
witches, practitioners, pagans, whatever you want to call yourself. It's a place that is very big on marketing and very big on aesthetics and if you don't have all of that, I think there is a is a little bit of self-doubt creeping in that you actually have what it takes to be a good practitioner, leader in your own right, uh, anything like that, things like that, because it doesn't look a certain way. So for me, getting out of that has definitely been a lot easier. Now I try to change it up, spruce it up a little bit, but you know, this old, this cloth, my decks, this tripod and this camera, that's kind of what I have. There's not a bunch of crystals, there's not a bunch of music, there's no tapestry, although I would like a tapestry at some point, something to put back here, but for right now, I think being okay with what I'm doing <laughs> is perfectly fine. And um, hmm. another thing is, lastly, maybe, I don't know, uh, because I am kind of narrowing down the stuff that I want to do and the things that I'm interested in for the moment, keeping myself open to whatever, but knowing that like there's certain things I have excluded, right? So like I said, with the altars and then the tools and the stuff like that, because I'm not in those traditions, I can immediately exclude those things out those materials out and narrowing my focus on what exactly I want to do. I've realized I am more interested in developing practices that integrate with body work. Uh, so particularly things like somatic therapy, massage, sound meditations, things that help the body release trauma as opposed to just uh, tarot. So it would be tarot, something that can offer psychological introspection uh, psychological input I guess maybe I don't know if that's really the word I'm aiming for but could do that and then a practice that also can help release the from you know release trauma or pain or dis-ease from the body so I know that a lot of my stuff will a lot of my materials will expand but they'll expand in a particular way because that's what I'm drawn to so I started looking at tarot in 2016 I got my first deck 2017 I was looking at tarot all through then excuse me then I started my my tarot channel 2019 like I think December or so and now we're in January no we're now in February mid-February of 2021 so I've kind of had like, what was that, almost five years, four-ish, yeah, like four years uh, to explore enough to narrow it down and know what I want to do and where I want to go. I have playlists on my YouTube that have different things that I'm interested in regarding healing, regarding psychology, regarding stuff that is... I believe would to help and uplift and best enhance the gifts that I have that I can connect with people but I want to be very particular not necessarily with the people that I help but I think I want to get myself fine-tuned enough that the people that need to come to me or have a desire to have a certain relationship where I'm working with them they're the ones that are coming to me I don't want this is kind of like a little bit of perfectionism, but like, but I don't want to waste anyone's time and I don't want anyone to waste my time. I want the relationships to kind of be not always getting out of it what you expect or what you're seeking, but that it's, it's still beneficial, like the majority of it, right? 85 to 95% of it is beneficial to you instead of offering a bunch of things and services that look good on paper but aren't things that I'm good at, things that I'm interested in, things that actually will 
be helpful to the people that are drawn to me as a person and someone who is supposed to do this sort of work because I feel like as I've gone on my journey I have to do this work I mean I can choose not to but I think that my life would be lacking in a certain dimension lacking a richness and depth and I also think that I wouldn't be able to find a profession that encapsulated the questions that I want to answer and that's how I kind of look at my life is this answering the questions that I am asking does it even offer avenues to seek out those answers so if it doesn't then I should probably stay away from it as far as long term not companionship but long term a long term endeavor <clears throat> And um, so that's kind of where I'm at with that. And I guess this really is last. With all of the things that I've been looking into and subscribe to, I am kind of paring it down. So I do need to start transforming my physical environment to allow these changes to come in, right? So if I need a specific space for that, I have to clean out the basement. I have to get rid of all of the old crafts and books and just old pieces of me that I know are still going to exist but because there's a physical element to it like I'm very low to release it because I know that in many ways you can go back and it's just kind of like holding on to the old self but knowing that I kind of need to move into who i am meant to be as far as who I'm meant to be just as a person but who I'm meant to be as a practitioner and as someone who offers or facilitates healing for people who are going to come to me right so getting rid of physical possessions getting rid of physical just clutter and junk and making sure that my room is kind of clear that I really ground myself in ritual or ground myself in practices that facilitate my own mental health my own emotional health my own well just well-being as a person so that I can be the best person going forward for myself and then other people and then also getting rid of things that you know don't serve me anymore coming to terms with those things and then also eliminating my online clutter because I have a lot of playlists that are full I have a watch layer like thing on YouTube on my like personal YouTube not my tarot YouTube but like that is like what 3,000 5,000 videos like there's no t I don't have that much time in my life to go through that so definitely um, just taking more care with what I decide to save, put on the back burner, save for later, stuff like that. And then eliminating a lot of stuff on here. So right now I'm actually going through my divination page, my divination, um, what is it called? Playlist. There you go. Playlist. My divination playlist and I'm just eliminating a bunch of videos. I had about like 300 or so. Um, I think I had more than that at one time but I'm just eliminating them because I'm watching them. Sometimes I'm skipping through them. Um, getting decks that I'm interested in and then checking out people's pages and if I like them like maybe save a few of those videos or if I don't um, really resonate with anything else and just kind of like removing it from the thing and just going forward like that but undoing my digital clutter is like just as important because it's like getting messages from everywhere can be kind of confusing in general as far as just going through life and I think particularly if you're vulnerable to people's perceptions or people's telling you who you are or all of these just just suggestions or things that you think and you pick things up because you think that's who you are that you think that's what will get you where you need to be and kind of going through it and realizing it doesn't resonate with you you're not that person anymore or just you know it's just time to let it go that the information that you've gotten 
is enough and that you can let it go without you know with grace essentially um that's something i'm moving through so physical space digital space all of this <laughs> mental emotional whatever um it's definitely transformed and i think because i know that i'm in a five-year cycle that i'm into the next cycle like i have a gray i have two gray hairs now i have one right here and then one like hidden in here like you know i'm getting older um and there's just certain things that I want to have in my life and there's certain things that have to leave if I want those things so it's a lot to process it's a lot to process it's a lot to think about it's just it's a lot but taking it day by day step by step you know video by video definitely helps so I probably try to eliminate another like 25 to 50 videos off of this and I noticed as I get more into reading tarot, I want to consume less of it. And so my divination tab is different from my tarot tab and different from my spell work tab. Uh, my tarot tab is tarot readings that I like to watch. So pick a card, stuff like that. Divination is more about the deck systems, learning about that. Spell work is more about... Um, different ritual items and that one has to get decluttered all the way out basically spirituality tab is just different philosophies and inspirational stuff like that discussions and so there's a lot that I'm filtering through because it's a lot that I'm trying to just eliminate you know so I'm just like oh. so it's like I'm pushing myself but I'm just really proud that I've made it this far because I got into tarot because I liked somebody and I got into watching it and then it was the addiction part and then it was like the spiraling and not knowing and now now that I feel like that cycle is over I'm like climbing out and I'm going to be the person that now is I guess going to be reading for people but like I noticed the shifts that's happened in the tarot community and I don't want to go down some of the roads that some of those people are going down. I want to go my own path and I think there's going to be quite a few different groups of tarot tube or tarot readers in the coming like years. I think there's going to be the people that do the love but I think there's going to be people that are really into introspection and astrology and um, consciousness and stuff like that not that love tarot isn't but I feel like I'm moving from the state of I guess the addicted to someone who's taking the reins on that addiction and turning it on myself to heal so that when the time comes for me to show up for someone I can do it because I have the necessary tools and so I guess it's a coming of age my Saturn return is going to kick off in like a year or two um, so I guess I'm really getting into that because it's needed. So yeah, this is way longer than I thought. I thought it was going to be way shorter, but like, that's everything. It's, it's a process. It's a journey. And I'm just, like I said, I'm just happy that I like stuck it through because like, when I started watching this, it was all about somebody else. Now, it's like I want to learn and I want to use that to help other people. And so, seeing it within myself is just like really cool. Alright, that's all I have to say. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.